What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. We don't want to set students up to fail. That's it's very important. We go online through our um, student portal and we log in and the students will sit down and run through a series of questions, uh, one on literacy, one on numeracy. And when they've finished that, it actually gives, it records us a level. Uh, and so we know uh, what levels our qualifications have. So depending on the certificate they're doing or diploma, we know what levels they're required and we can see what levels the students have achieved and to know whether they're suitable to do that course. If they were one level below, that would be fine and we could support them on the way through. But if there were a couple of levels below, let's say, we might have to have them do some training before. It's ensuring that we get people into a course that can actually read to the level that is required um, and that their writing levels are also to the level that is required. We also have application forms as well and we look at the language, literacy, technology skills, numeracy skills, um, and their general ability to be able to communicate just in writing to you. So what we actually ask them to do is to write a 10 sentences or 10 lines and ensure that their grammar is okay. We also spend time with people individually when they're filling out their enrolment forms. You can usually get a really strong sense through observing at that point where their literacy is. After perhaps uh, uh, enrolment into a training specification, we could um, get them to self-assess, so a series of questions, commonly known as commencement question that I'm used to, a uh, series of questions written um, or it could be in a verbal, a verbal delivery, just to obtain information from the learner as to their level of, uh, of core skills. So they don't want to say, I'm illiterate or I'll need support in the classroom. They just don't want to be saying that. But you find it out quite quickly um, through tests, through assessments, through assignments, because a large component of what they're doing, they have to read and they have to be able to communicate. So even if the language literacy numeracy test doesn't identify, we identify it. We then spend time in the classroom chatting with people. In the very first few days, we spend a lot of time chatting, going around the room, getting people to speak, giving them opportunities to speak. Generally, the person with the LN issue will be the quiet person in the group. So sometimes you might need to go over to them and so having a bit of a chat. And you, sometimes you can tell by their language. You think just the, the, the way they form their language, you can tell that, OK, this guy hasn't had a lot of formal learning. We also then get them to do some group work and we'll observe them in group work. We tend to spend that first 20, 30 minutes particularly if you don't know the group, assessing the group, and that's been a major change. We'll get people to alternate being a scribing group work so that, we, you know, that everybody has an opportunity, but that allows us to see where people's confidence are at and the literary, literacy levels. We also get people to take home pieces of reading and then come back and ask people to individually give us an understanding of what that reading was about for them. And you'll start to see people that don't participate and then you speak to them individually sometimes about you know, how, how you're going with that. Has it been something you find difficult? Have you understood what the reading's about? And that's when they start to tell you individually. So you start to sift them out a little bit. So that's been a huge turnaround for us, knowing at the start of the year where people are at and who, who we're dealing with in terms of literacy, numeracy and language.